Hey guys, it's Lefez here. Um, bring you a video talking about um, Nganu being released from UFC recently and he's making his way into boxing. Now, <clears throat> hold on, give me a second here. All right, I'm back. Um, yeah, I was saying, yeah, being released from UFC and making his way into boxing. Um, you know, obviously, since that news has come out, you know, people have been talking about Nganu fighting the likes of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. And I'm just sitting there thinking, I'm like, why the, why in the fuck are people entertaining this shit? Why? Oh, because Ngannou is such a hard punch and blah, 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 blah. And do I care? No. I mean, is it the first time we've seen a heavyweight, you know, boxer be able to punch hard? No. So why are we acting like it's a new thing? Boxing fans have this thing where when the fighter can punch, they fucking, you know, make it seem better than what it actually is. No, it just means the fighter can fucking punch. Doesn't make the fight any better. So, again, I ask, why in the hell are people entertaining this shit? Oh, because, you know, Dana White fucked him over and by going to boxing, he's going to get a big payday and deserves it. No, he don't deserve shit. He don't deserve shit. <coughs> now, was he getting fucked over by Dana White? He most probably was. A lot of UFC fighters get fucked over by Dana White. You know? Dana White's a piece of shit for that. You know? But, what do you mean he deserves it? You don't deserve shit. He's still making good money. He's probably got sponsorships and deals and everything. He's, he can live fine. He's doing well. So we don't deserve a big payday or anything like that. You know, he's not entitled to a big payday. What the fuck are you guys talking about? You know who's entitled to a big payday? You know, who, you know who deserves a big payday? The fucking boxers that spend their whole life boxing. The ones that have been training for years as amateur, have accomplished all things in the amateurs and are now in the pros, you know, making their way as a contender in the sport. Those are the guys that deserve big paydays. There's contenders out right now that are probably you know that still have a job trying to make ends meet you know contenders out there struggling to get you know a good promotional contract you know and they can't even get a good fight they can't get they can't get the title shot that they've worked hard for that they put the blood sweat and tears um for that they put the hours in the gym for they can't even get a title fight and someone like Nganu who hasn't had the path that they had can just go in there and get a um, you know, a big fight. And I don't want anyone to get confused here. This is how the game works. If you have a name, it'll be a lot easier for you to get opportunities. You can't really, com I mean, you can complain, but again, that's just real realistic, you know. If you have a name, that means you bring more money. Of course, you know, you're going to get more opportunities. I mean, we've seen comedians and musicians and whatnot. You can't act for shit. Get these big acting roles in films. While there's actors out there that have been acting for years and years and years, auditioning for all these gigs, and the best they can get is a fucking minor role, even at that. Some of them don't even get a role at all. Some of them are told to fuck off. You know? Sorry for the pause there. Just had a fucking video interrupted by some person outside. Hopefully that don't happen again, because that will piss me off. What was I? Yeah, so I do understand that having a name it will be able to give you bigger opportunities in, you know, the sport of boxing or anything in life. Having a big name, as I just described before, you know, actors, musicians and whatnot that can't act for shit, getting big acting roles and making millions off of it. I understand that and whatnot. And I'm not completely against it. But the thing is, people saying, you know, people are entertaining this shit, but they're the same ones that complain that the best don't fight the best. I mean... <laughs> How are you going to play the best, don't fight the best, but be entertaining shit like this? You know what I mean? Like, there's literally contenders out there who can, who can give a much better fight than Ngannou did, who don't have the name that he does. Who make, give a much better fight. But, oh, you, you guys don't want to see those fights? No? But you said you wouldn't entertain this shit, but you want to complain that the best don't fight the best. I mean, I don't understand. Like, with Tyson Fury, what, like, come on. You know... The guy has only had, what, three title defences in 15 years as a pro? His first title fight was in 2015. He won that. You know, he didn't lose his titles in the ring. He never lost or anything like that. 
So it's not like he lost his titles in the ring and blah, 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 blah. And he had to, you know, rebuild himself and build himself back up. No, he never lost his titles in the ring. He won it back in uh, 2015. He made no title defences. Went off, did his thing for whatever, blah, 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 blah. We all know the story. And then, you know, he just, <laughs> since then, what, since the Vladimir Klitschko fight, it's only been, what, two top 10 heavyweights since 2015. That's going on eight years ago in November, people. And this is the guy that people are championing. He's been a pro for 15 years and always got a show for it. It's three fucking title defences. <laughs> are you kidding me? And two top 10 heavyweights in, f you know, I'm uh, sorry, two, um, three top 10 heavyweights in 15 years as a pro. But instead of encouraging Tyson Fury to fight the top contenders in his sport, we instead want to go encourage him to fight fucking Francis Ngarden. Deontay Wilder, the same thing. You know, um, what's he done? He's even worse, Deontay Wilder. What's he actually fucking done? Oh, 10 title defense, 10 title defense. All right, cool. Go tell me the people that he's defending his fucking title against. What? Eric Molina? You mean Eric Molina who got knocked out twice in one round? By fucking Ashanti Jordan and Eric Molina? Are you fucking kidding me? Who else? Um, your one Duopa? I mean, come on, bruv. <laughs> come on. Spilka? Who gets knocked out by everyone? Is this the best you, you guys can do? Chris Ariola? Washed up Ariola? That's the best you guys can do? Who's Ariola ever beat? You know, who else? Um, Gerald Washington. Really? Gerald Washington. Berman Stavern. Really? A rematch of Berman Stavern who got dropped by Derek Rossi, the, Derek Rossi in the fight before and hadn't fought in over a year. That's your guy? Seriously? Luis Ortiz? That's probably his best fucking win. You know? But Luis Ortiz hasn't done shit since then. You know? I mean, come on, man. His best win is over a 40 year plus guy who, who takes high blood pressure medication. Like, come on, what the fuck is this, man? Who else? You know, Dominic Brazil? Really? Dominic Brazil? And Luis Ortiz again? Like, as if the first time wasn't, uh, wasn't enough. You have to do it again. I mean, come on. Like, this resume is garbage. Yet people encouraging this guy to fight Francis Ngannou? But you want to complain the best are not fighting the best? What is wrong with you people? Why are you encouraging this shit? Why? Why? Imagine an uproar if Eddie Hearn said, Oh, you know, we're, we're looking you know, to have Anthony Joshua fighting Ngannou. Whole heap of outrage. Whole heap. And Anthony Joshua's fought way more top tens than both of them. That guy can never seem to get slack, but everyone, you know, swears blind that that guy is shit, right? Anthony Joshua can't take a punch, he's chinny, he has no stamina, he's a bodybuilder, he's overrated, he's a robot. Yet that guy's the one that's been held to higher standards. Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury are so many levels above Anthony Joshua, yet they, yet, yet they get held to lower standards. Does that make any fucking sense? No, it fucking doesn't. It doesn't make any sense, but these people out there will think it does. Whole heap of outrage if Anthony Joshua said, oh, I'm going to go fight Francis Ngannou for a payday. Even though he's beaten far better opponents than both of them have. I don't understand. But you want to complain that the best don't fight the best. You guys are part of the problem. If you guys weren't entertaining shit like this, fights like that wouldn't get made. It's that fucking simple. Jesus Christ, man. And I wouldn't have problems with fights like this. If, you know, the fighters were actually doing what they get paid to do, which is fight, you know, the top contenders and whatnot. I mean, like, Muhammad Ali, he had a bunch of these crossover fights. Like, he had his exhibition with Antonio, Antonio, uh, Antonio Noki. I think he's a famous Japanese um, martial artist, right? He died not too long ago. Now, at the end of it, it wasn't really popular at all. You know, a lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people just, you know, didn't like it because apparently it was boring. I haven't watched the whole of that. I don't think I'm ever going to. It doesn't look that exciting. That's all 15 rounds of all that bullshit as well. But Ali had already fought whole heap of top contenders. He already fought his champions. He's already been on this boot a couple of times at that point. You know, he's already done what he gets paid to do, which is fight the top contenders. With no problems, he'll take on all comers. So yeah, I have no problem with fighters taking on fights like this in between because 
at the end of the day, these guys are human beings. They need to preserve their bodies. You can't be taking tough fight after tough fight after tough fight after tough fight and expect to have a long career. You'll burn out quickly, you know. You burn out quick, burn out quickly, health as well. So I can understand, you know, someone taking on tough fight after tough fight will, you know, have a crossover fight or something like that. I can understand why. For easy payday. But when you're not even taking on to, um, tough opponents and you're having this shit, you're entertaining these crossover fights, no. I can't be for it. I can't be for it. You know, like I said, boxing fans are so hypocritical. You know, they they will fucking say the best on fighting the best, but entertain this shit. Oh, it's entertaining because he's got power. Who fucking cares? Is it the first time we've seen a guy with power? He's not a boxer. He's not a professional boxer. We all know who's going to win the fight. We all know who's going to win if Fury decides to fight in Garnu. We already know who's going to win if Wilder fights in Garnu. We already know who's going to win. How the fuck is that entertaining? You guys say all the time, it's not entertaining if we already know who's going to win before the fight even happens. Then why the fuck are you entertaining this shit? What, because Ngarnu has a name? Just because he has a fucking name doesn't mean the fight's going to be any good. That's the problem with you people. You buy too much into fucking names. We all know Ngarnu's going to gas out after the fucking second round. And we all know he's going to get his ass whipped by Tyson Fruit and sent to another dimension by Deontay Wilder. We already know this shit. Why do we need to see it? Why? You guys can't even explain why you want to see it. <laughs> Jeez, man. Like I said, don't fucking complain about the best not fighting the best. But you're entertaining this shit right here with fighters who do not fight the best regularly. Oh, but God forbid Anthony Joshua would do it. When he's the one that fights the best. I can't with you people anyways. I can't with you. Anyways. It's the first. I'm out.